working as a lawyer as well uh, i was representing before the high courts and the supreme court as well so i always knew that i will be representing before all these famous people so i just thought that okay i have been in so many final arguments i've argued before all these judges i just in my head i was thinking i was representing a case the case was karan pandey and he was just representing his own case that yeah. why he should be selected for the and having that mindset itself i just i felt very comfortable because that's what i've been doing for past two and a half years and i felt that having that that frame of mind is the best because you think on your feet mm. and i believe in you the best thing ever that anyone can do is not think too much believe that they can do it and just go for it instead of wondering what could be asked just think that what you can answer yes, yes. what kind of attitude that you have Hi everyone. My name is Anujinder. Welcome to my channel. Today I am uh, sitting with Karan Pandey, who has cleared RBI examination 2021 from the legal stream. I know that very few of you uh, of of the guys uh, who are available on the internet uh, opt from opt to write, write this examination from the legal field, but I am very sure that uh, through his experience and through his uh, uh, you know uh, success at his uh, uh, you know first end towards RBI examination. You are certainly going to get a lot of uh, inf uh, useful information as to how he wrote the examination, how he prepared, and how he experienced the entire process of the examination. First of all, congrats, Karan, on getting selected. Uh, I think uh, you got selected in your first attempt. That's a big feat. That's a big achievement. So, congratulations for that. Thanks a lot. Uh, before starting with the actual interview, I I know that I asked you before as well, but I think it's a very it's very unique something that you shared with me about your experience of the day when you were selected and when when you found out so i would uh, humbly ask you to repeat the same thing the question is how did you feel when you were selected when you saw your roll number in there and uh, the process which resulted in you taking this examination and clearing it in your first attempt all right uh, so I'll change the question a little. I'll start with the second part first. That how I ended up taking uh, the RBI exam itself. Yes. So after my law school, I did my law from Nagpur itself, the five years course. And right after my law school, I started working in a law firm in Hyderabad. So while working there, then the lockdown hit all of us. So I came back to my home place that is Nagpur, and I was working from home there. Then uh, suddenly I realized that okay, all of this uh, the government exam is much more uh, lucrative to look at. as a there is a job security and second of all you get to experience uh, policy making which you cannot experience in any private sector so i thought let's just give it a try so i thought let's just go for the sebi exam first since it was uh, so first exam that i found out uh, i cleared the first phase however i could not uh, clear the second phase and uh, right after that during that time i also have uh, the rbi forms were also out so i filled up the form for rbi uh, grade b exam that is a legal stream one and uh, i said uh, by chance i just thought that okay i did not know that it was such a prestigious exam or if it i the kind of competition that i face in it i just filled the form and thought that okay i'll just look at the papers i look at the syllabus and i'll just go for it and uh, so i gave the exam and uh, so uh, after the exam results itself the moment that i realized that i have, I have been selected for the interview that's when i first i checked my roll number four times or five times just to be abundantly clear that okay i have cleared the exam and i have been called for the interview and uh, it took me a couple of days to actually come to terms that okay i have cleared the exam mostly because i, I was never a very bright student the proverbial sharma ji ka beta waisa bilkul bhi nahi tha main so uh, i just thought that okay it is difficult to realize this i, I told my parents they were on top of the world they thinking that oh wow finally our kid has done something really nice a government job finally the interview has been called so they're like okay finally you can go for some other exams as well if you can clear this one even if you don't clear the interview that's what my father told me that even if you don't clear the interview don't worry about it at least you cleared the exam that it, in itself is a big thing and uh, if god has it if it's god's will then you will clear the exam fully and you will be selected in rbi and once the interview results were out uh, so my both of my parents were actually asleep i found out the result has had come out at 11:30 at night so i just went into their room and like okay wake up uh, my results are out and uh, they were just dancing like my father started dancing he said yes finally this is amazing and uh, so we just contacted our relatives and 
an uncle of mine just drove down at 12 at night oh. thinking that okay yes we need to party we need to celebrate yeah. so it was i mean uh, it is still i'm still in bliss to be honest it is still difficult to come to terms that i have cleared an exam which has a success ratio of less than 0.01% is what i feel am i right i Yeah. So, and it was actually yesterday that I saw that the amount of perks an RBI Grade B officer gets. Till now, I had not seen that. Mostly because, like, let's not count our chickens before they hatch. So I once better. I, it's it's better. It's good that you did not get into all those. Yeah, I mean, I guess it works for me because initially I did not have any pressure because I did not know the amount of competition that I have. Secondly, I did not make any hopes that okay, if I become an RBI Grade B officer, I'll do this, I'll do that, because I did not know. I just saw the job profile. I thought, okay, okay, this is the kind of work that there is. I like the kind of work that there is, and I just thought, let's just dive into it. Hmm. I think the primary motivation of you writing the examination was the work, and not uh, you know materialistic or external things like pay, security, and all those things. I think that's very important because that psychologically plays with us at every stage. That has a big impact on how we, you know, take competition. Is our approach negative towards competition? Is our approach negative towards the exam itself, towards the syllabus itself? Are we taking it like a pressure, or are we taking it like some fun activity, or or positively as a challenge that we just we just need to, you know, take in our lives and enjoy the process? I think that's very important. So I think. Yeah, a blessing in disguise that you did not have a look at all those things and did not have to worry about those things. <laughs> yeah. okay. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Uh, let's get into uh, the examination now. Uh, phase one, phase two, and the interview. So, because I don't, I'm not an expert in this area. I don't have a lot of idea. Uh, therefore, it's all to you now. How did you prepare for phase one? What were the kinds of questions asked? Phase two, and then the interview. Okay. so uh, the legal exam itself it has only one phase and then directly you are called for the interview so they try to make the first phase itself really difficult and really comprehensive in its syllabus so uh, i went through the syllabus so primarily there were questions regarding constitution and uh, as a disclaimer i am putting it out as an rbi also puts it out that the syllabus is not exhaustive yes it means that they can they can ask you anything between heaven and earth if it's regarding law So, what I uh, gathered from all the previous years' question papers was that the question, lot of constitutional law questions, lot of commercial law questions, lot of contracts, and uh, a bits and pieces of criminal laws, mm-hmm. and as of course ADR, that is alternative dispute resolution, that is arbitration, mediation, and negotiations. So all those questions. So they ask a lot of questions from these areas, primarily from the constitution, the most. Okay. So it was a bit surprising for me, mostly because I always thought that RBI deals with banking laws, and they should be asking questions from that naturally. As a uh, rookie, you would think like that. But then, once I went through the paper and the syllabus itself, I realized that okay, RBI is asking more questions from Constitution, and that I realized during the realized during why they asked the, those questions in the interview itself. Mm-hmm. So I'll first finish off this. So I prepared uh, primarily uh, from Constitution. So I. went with the basic idea that i should focus more on the bare acts themselves instead of the commentaries so you must be knowing and everyone knows that everyone who has studied law and everyone who knows a lawyer knows that there are several books there are tons of books on just really tiny acts like they'll just come the negotiable instruments act is very small it's just a hundred it's not even 15 pages or 20 pages but the books on it they'll go in volumes thousands of pages so i realized that instead of going through all those thousands of pages i just need to get my basics clear that is what the act says because everything else is just an interpretation of that so i prepared by just going through all the bare acts i mugged them up i understood them because you read anything you read you understand it from your own point of view and then you read the other interpretation of the same statements that's how you prepare by least ki instead of going through all of that interpretation i just finish off the syllabus as much as i can and get a picture in my head okay this is what it means and then i went through the interpretations so i focused mostly on constitutional law and law of contracts for my preparation and then 138 and other acts as well hmm. so now the comes the d day the examination itself so uh, i realized that uh, i have a really bad handwriting and the entire paper was uh, descriptive and i had to write it with pen and paper so i already have that block in my head that okay anyone who can read my handwriting is going to think that i am a doctor 
so i went ahead i thought that okay let's just focus on one thing make your pre- paper as presentable as possible so i took so they allow black and blue ink so i played a little trick i said ki okay i found a loophole i can bring different shades of blue itself so i took three shades of blue one black pen and one pencil because in over said you can't bring a pencil uh-huh. to highlight everything uh-huh. so i started writing and then to my surprise and shock to be honest the entire paper was very different from the earlier patterns mm-hmm. it was completely out of the box mm-hmm. everything was situation based nothing was direct so i can give you one example of the question that i can recall was that this one mr singh comes up to your office he has two checks issued to him by a company of which uh, he was uh, he took up a contract of uh, some building and one of them uh, so both the checks have bounced one of them so both of them have different endorsements one has funds insufficient and the other one says that that's a bad check because 6 months have already passed from the last date hmm. so then the questions were uh, firstly so the remedies that mr singh has secondly uh, all the uh, what is the position of a company in uh, negotiable instruments act in cases of check bounce so whether a company can be uh, made an accuse directly without a director or a director can only be made without a company and then finally uh, what did mr singh miss now this final question was took me uh, by surprise mostly because what am i supposed to write in just the question what did mr singh miss then after reading the question a couple of times i realized that, okay what they're trying to understand is that what exactly should mr singh have done differently to not be in this soup mm-hmm. so after writing the entire description and all the questions were like this. so there was one on negotiable instruments like I, like i said there was another one on uh, the civil laws that is cpc another one on transfer property act constitutional law question was again something very similar and then there were mcqs so this entire paper was for 3 hours then there was one hour break and uh, another 3 hour paper on english so the english paper was so this paper since it was very surprising for me i was not very confident about it if i clear it or not but the english paper i was very confident because i had ample amount of time to check it and recheck it and since it was uh, an online one i could make corrections and everything without making the entire paper look very shabby hmm. so so i utilized that time i went through the entire english paper again and again checked it thrice four times and then i was pretty confident that okay whatever i have written i'm very confident about it that it's decent and uh, it shouldn't be a problem as far as english is concerned and then so the exam was held on 10th of april and the results were out i believe somewhere around first week of june so during that time i did not think that okay i'm going getting in rbi like i believe some people are very confident they feel that okay they will be called for interview at least hmm. Now, however i wasn't one of them i was thinking that i was taking things in my stride i was trying to find another job and doing everything that i could like a daily routine thing and then suddenly the day came and i knew that okay i have been selected then the interview call was on 1st of september so the 1st of september so the i got my center in nagpur rbi itself so i had me and another girl and uh, another guy so three of us were in uh, there at the time of interview so to my surprise again uh, i was not taking anything to my head as you said like uh, pretty uh, calm like that and uh, i just thought that it's a great opportunity to be able to finally witness from inside rbi because uh, living in nagpur i see rbi every other day because all my schools and colleges they were on the rbi was always on the way so i always saw the building from outside but i never went inside mm-hmm. and neither did my father or mm-hmm. my mother so it was it was uh, a very uh, pleasant uh, revelation to me that okay finally i get to go inside this building which i have been seeing since my childhood so once i stepped inside uh, the atmosphere was whole together different i cannot explain it in words uh, because the kind of vibe that that place has is completely different it you have to experience it to know it is what i feel so once we were taken inside uh, we were made to sit in a room it was sort of like a canteen and tea was served so i was like okay finally mm-hmm. it's time to uh, game face on let's do this so we had our uh, document uh, verification so i was number third so before me the guy was having an interview then another girl mm. and then i was there so mm. i had ample of ample amount of time so i just thought okay let's utilize this time and roam around abia see the building see the architecture see all the paintings that are there talk to the people there so i fortunate i was fortunate enough to meet the hr and the, the 
the gm of hr right there so i had a nice interaction with him so he was asking me ki how many seats are there how how was the exam when was the exam what kind of questions were asked and then he was telling me about his own experience in the rbi as to how what sort of attitude that they want so actually uh, this this part of the interview was uh, very similar to what you get in colleges where right before the viva some friend of yours comes outside of the viva and tells you that he ye question pooch rahe hain so prepare for this something very similar like that because he gave me the best advice he said that one thing in rbi that they see is they know that you are knowledgeable that's why you create the exam what they're seeing is trust so be honest don't at all bluff be absolutely brutally honest and every answer that you give it should be very much believable so i said all right so he he gave his own example of during his interview he said that uh, he was asked why do you want to join rbi as an hr so he said that many of the many of his peers they gave the answer saying that uh, because we like banking sector and xyz reasons that it's a best bank like it's the largest bank in india and all that but he gave the most honest answer he said that uh, i would uh, i have job security and the pay is very nice so it becomes my natural choice that i'll come here Mm-hmm. and uh, that's when the chairman as well laughed he said that yeah that's a very honest answer that's what you want a person who is trustworthy a person who is so honest is not going to lie behind your back right so right. so he was like you can just be yourself don't stress about it and i wasn't stressing at all mostly because i went with the mindset that i am getting this opportunity to go inside rbi that in itself is such a big deal even if i get selected even if i don't it's it hardly matters because i have gotten this opportunity Hmm. so that happens in the interview started so the first guy went in uh, his interview lasted for around 15 to 17 minutes he came out uh, and incidentally he was profusely sweating so i asked him what happened he said that the air conditioning was working probably but then once they started asking me questions it got very difficult for me hmm. because uh, on the pre- amount of pressure and everything so i asked him what sort of questions are they asking so he said because i have done my llm in uh, constitutional law there were a lot of constitutional law questions Hmm. I was like, okay, I need to focus more about my profile itself. I was like, hardly it matters now because I can't prepare anything now. I'll just yes. be calm. Hmm. When the girl came out, I could not interact with her because I was next. So, incidentally, during my uh, interview, right before my interview, uh, the HR he contacted the services board, saying that uh, because one of the candidates had said that uh, the air conditioning is not working probably, so they're going to turn on the air conditioning. as well as they're going to change the speaker because the earlier candidate she also said that she couldn't hear the services board members so considering all that they contacted they told that some person some technical member will come into the board uh, come into the interview first and then karan pande will enter that worked in your favor yeah so i still remember the term karan pande will enter <laughs> nahi nahi so uh, i could see the entire board sitting so it was a really large screen and we were sitting really close to the screen itself so it was as if we were in person mm-hmm. so i went inside i asked them may i have a seat uh, they said yeah please go ahead the moment i sat down the first question that the chairman asked me uh, was ki karan are you alone in the room so i look around my uh, and i said they're not that i can see anyone so i believe i'm alone so they said you're all right fair enough we shall begin so they said that uh, the chairman was introduced to me and he's a services board chairman and uh, he'll be starting the interview and then he said ki we also have a technical member he will be conducting the most of the questions the first question that he asked me uh, there are so many good candidates that we have interview, interviewed today why should you be selected so and to be honest i had never prepared for this question so i was like okay let's just go ahead with whatever i think is right so i just gave him a brief intro, introduction about myself i said that uh, during my college days itself i was very much into debating and uh, mood courts and quizzes so i always had an analytical mind right back then right after my law school i started uh, practicing in a law firm so litigation during litigation i realized what all disputes arise because of directions and laws that rbi makes and till now i was exploiting those directions and laws and working with rbi i'll be able to foresee those things and that's why i become an asset to rbi itself and then he, the follow up question that he asked me was uh, how is rbi a regulator and also supervisor and what's the difference between the two with regards to rbi as a regulator in rbi act and how it's a supervisor in the banking regulation act mm-hmm. 
So I explained saying that uh, RBI, when being a regulator, also makes laws and gives directions and also observes whether they are for properly being followed or not. As far as supervision goes, RBI, the appropriate authorities make those principles and gives those directions. RBI is purely supervising them, say, uh, monitoring whether they are properly followed or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, technical member, he started asking questions. So I believe he was Mr. Unni Krishnan. Yeah, he was Mr. Unni Krishnan. And uh, he started ans asking me legal questions. So it was, best I can describe it is it was a rapid fire. Because uh, I could hardly get five seconds. That's even a lot. I could not even get, in some questions, I could not even get five seconds to answer the question. I was getting interrupted in the middle because I was having follow-up questions. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, and I, at that point of time, I was thinking, okay, this is a really a rapid fire, the coffee with current rapid fire round <laughs> where I've been asking questions left and right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it took up a good 10 minutes or so of asking all those questions. I believe I answered all of them, like apart from a few here and there. I believe three questions were there, which I could not answer absolutely accurately, but I did answer something. And uh, re that was relevant to that around it because the questions were very specific sometimes. Then uh, another member, he asked me a question uh, regarding the new e rupee that has been launched by RBI. So he said that, uh, do you know about it? I said, yes. Uh, it's a, so you can say, can you tell us something about it? So I said, okay, it's the new e rupee that has been launched by RBI and it is different from cryptocurrency. Now this was the question which I regret till now. Why did I answer it like this? Because I could have answered it so much better. Because I did not, I knew about e, e rupee, but then I do not know what, what's the difference between a cryptocurrency and a e rupee exactly. I just remembered that line from one article that I read that there is some difference. I do not know what difference it is. So he asked me the next question was naturally, what is the difference between the two? Mm -hmm. So I came clean. I remembered the lines of the HR himself. I came clean. I said that, sir, I, the only thing that I can recall is that there is a difference. However, I cannot pinpoint the specific difference itself. I'll have to read upon it. And I'll get back to you. Mm. They are all right. They were very cordial like that. They did not uh, seem very offended or anything. They were very cordial. They were like, okay, all right, no problem. And then they asked me a question. Uh, then another member asked me a question saying that the new locker guidelines that have been made by RBI, do you know which case do they come from? Then again, I remembered, I could not remember the case. I said it honestly that I cannot remember the case because I haven't read it till now. So I wouldn't comment on it. And then they asked me questions again, technical questions about what case that you have recently read. So recently I was reading about the 138 Act and the Supreme Court's judgment on it. So I explained to them, this is the Act, this is the judgment itself that I have read about. And the Supreme Court is giving, asking High Courts to give direction so that there is expeditious trial of 138 cases itself because they make the major bulk of cases in India. So there were no follow-up questions fortunately on that. And uh, apart from that, there's another member who asked me a question so there were total six members. Another question, another member who asked me a question with regards to uh, what's a nominee and what's a legal representative, a legal heir, and how are they different? And can they be the same person? And after that, I believe that was the last question. And I said, okay, all right, Karan, thank you so much. And uh, I said, okay, it was a pleasure being in front of the eminent panels. And I just stood up. I asked them, can I leave? And they said, yeah, absolutely. And I left. And after coming out again, it was, the moment was very much, again, I was not able to comprehend that, okay, I've been presenting, I've been so confident before the chairman himself of services board and uh, all the members, because all of them, I believe they're all at least uh, director grade people or at least CGMs. And it was so surprising because I, I always thought that, okay, if I meet these people in person, studying for an exam and then I meet these people in person, it'll always be... It is difficult to keep your nerves calm is what I would say. Yes. But then somehow I managed, mostly because I I went in with not thinking too much. I went in thinking that, okay, I, they already know that I have cleared the exam. And all I can do now is not uh, spoil it and just be myself because I can do it. Hmm. So that was pretty much it. I think uh, you had an amazing experience. Uh, one thing that I... That, that I was feeling while I while you were you know talking about your experience was that you were very much in the moment during the interview before the interview during your preparation I think that is something that majority of us lack nowadays due to the kind of environment that we live in because we are always either in our past in our future we are always thinking okay this is what we got to do these are the targets that we got to achieve 
and in that in that entire process we forget about living in the moment enjoying you know what is right in front of us and i think you, are, you have nailed it by you know enjoying that moment uh, so I, i'll tell you about my experience whenever i have been in the interview for rbi or upsc everybody is reading the newspaper thinking okay what are they going to ask what are they going to ask they might ask this question they might ask this question it is not going to you know help you out what probably help more was talking to an hr person who gave you the best advice that anyone could and absolutely and it, worked, it worked in the interview room as well so i i think living the moment always works and uh, just because you have this probably habit or idea or the realization that you're doing it and you're enjoying every moment i think that that will always work that will always you know uh, help you working as a lawyer as well uh, i was representing before the high courts and the supreme court as well so i always knew that i will be representing before all these famous people so i just thought that okay i've been in so many final arguments i've argued before all these judges i just in my head i was thinking i was representing a case the case was karan pande and he was just representing his own case that yeah. why he should be selected yeah and having that mindset itself i just i felt very comfortable because that's what i've been doing for past two and a half years and i felt that having that that frame of mind is the best because you think on your feet mm. and i believe in you the best thing ever that anyone can do is not think too much believe that they can do it and just go for it instead of wondering what could be asked just think that what you can answer yes, yes. what's the attitude that you have yes. because i i read i read it, i believe i read it in your blog itself that the thing that they see is your attitude like if you have the right attitude you are in you get your foot in the door that's it they wouldn't care if you answer a few questions wrong here and there but if you have the clarity of thought if you have the right attitude that they want you're in yes yes you are you are very right about that as well okay i think uh, i have had a very interesting experience talking with you and understanding some parts of the you know legal examination um, and uh, if any aspirant comes in the future then i will certainly have you know Uh, something more to say and uh, some place to guide, uh, so that they don't have to, you know, shoot in the dark and they have a better experience at writing this examination. Thanks a lot, Karan. Uh, before we finish off, anything specifically that you would want to uh, say or any message that you would want to give out to all the future aspirants in the legal field who are going to be writing the examination next. I I would say the one thing that I really felt uh, difficult about the RBI exam is the documentation that you require because they require two years of experience. So the proper documentation to substantiate those two years of experience, RBI has a very specific criteria that you need to get it from a bar association. So I believe everyone should ponder upon that first and get your documents in order because uh, before the interview, you don't want to be running around finding documents. So mm. having that and apart from that, I believe the entire preparation and the exam itself. I feel that if I can do it, anyone can because I scored sixty percent in twelfth standard, and there are tons of people in India who have scored way higher than I did. So I believe anyone can. You just need to go for it and not think too much about it. Yes, I think that's a very good message that you've sent out. Not don't think too much about it. Life is a journey. Just enjoy it the way it, you know, present in front of you. Yes. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, Karan, for uh, sharing your experience with all the students out there. and i'm certain you're going to have a very nice time in rbi you're going to represent uh, the rbi uh, in front of the high court or the supreme court and now the tables have turned you are uh, going to represent the other side but i'm certain you're going to have a very you know rich experience working in such a great organization thanks a lot all the best bye bye thank you so much